Podcast. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, today, we're going to do a webinar on strengthening and streamlining COVID compliance verification. My name is Derek Tumalak. I'm the product manager for AWS Cloud HSM and Gotham. I'm Gautam. Uh, I'm the software development manager with AWS Cloud HSM. Great. So the agenda for today, um, we'll cover a little bit about data protection in AWS. We'll give you a brief overview of AWS Cloud HSM. And then we're going to dive into COVID compliance verification and a demo. So Gotham will take you through an architecture slide and uh, also a very short demo on how um, we're enabling uh, you know, compliance verification. Uh, I'll also talk about some other common use cases for Cloud HSM and then just some of the overall benefits of using AWS Cloud HSM. All right, with that, let's talk briefly about data protection in AWS. Uh, you know, it really drives better business outcomes. Uh, when you're using um, a service like AWS, uh, you want to protect intellectual property and trade secrets. Uh, you may have end customer needs around protecting their information, and that's obviously a way to strengthen your brand as a, say, a software provider that's deploying a solution within AWS. You can better automate tasks to save time and reduce risk. Um, you can scale with visibility through the various audit information and capabilities we have. And you can also easily integrate with hundreds of AWS services, some of them native, and then other solutions that you can build yourself um, integrating into solutions like AWS Cloud HSM. And of course, there are global security and compliance controls um, that are important and, and you know, that customers need to uh, adhere to in order to meet uh, you know, needs across the world. OK, now let's talk about AWS Cloud HSM. So one of the first questions that might come up is, what is a hardware security module? And this text here is taken straight from Wikipedia. And so I'll, I'll read through it very quickly. But it is effectively, a hardware security module is a physical computing device that safeguards and manages digital keys, performs encryption and decryption functions for digital signatures, strong authentication, and other cryptographic functions. These modules traditionally come in the form of a plug-in card or an external device that attaches directly to a computer or network server. A hardware security module contains one or more secure crypto processor chips. Now that's traditional. Um, you know, with AWS Cloud HSM, we've obviously taken that same capability and we run it in the cloud, run it as a service, and provide the elasticity and the scalability and all of the great things that the cloud delivers. So we've effectively done that, and we'll talk a little bit more about how that happens. So before we dive into that, uh, one of the things that often comes up when our customers look at AWS Cloud HSM is we also ask them to consider the AWS Key Management Service, or AWS KMS. Um, we ask that they evaluate using KMS directly, or another alternative is to use KMS with the custom key store, which in fact just ultimately integrates with AWS Cloud HSM behind the scenes. So a couple reasons for considering KMS is it can often be more cost effective for large scale key management. Um, unlike Cloud HSM, where you're allocating dedicated instances of Cloud HSM, KMS is really more focused on the keys themselves and securing the transaction. Uh, both of the options mentioned above offer seamless integration with existing AWS services. So again, one of the key differences is that KMS provides native integration with AWS services, whereas Cloud HSM tends to lend itself more towards, um, yeah, I'll say, custom-built applications or situations where customers develop applications that want to talk to, say, a traditional HSM and are migrating to a, a service like Cloud HSM. So the next question would be, you know, when would one use AWS Cloud HSM? And there's a few high-level reasons here. Um, as mentioned earlier, um, you know, customers may have specific needs around using an HSM, and so there may be language in your in customer contracts that say, you know, you must have an HSM in use. Uh, there may be a need for FIPS 140-2 level three as well. And so, in either of the situations, if you have that FIPS requirement. Uh, level three specifically, or if you ne need a dedicated single tenant HSM as part of the solution, uh, that's when Cloud HSM would be the better alternative. Uh, another possibility is the requirement for an end-to-end -end connection um, directly from the end customer application all the way through to the HSM. Um, you know, Cloud HSM provides a solution for that type of requirement. Uh, another set of examples comes down to the libraries and how applications may integrate with cryptographic capabilities. Um, we support standards like PK611, JCE, CNG, 
Uh, these standards uh, make it very easy for traditional applications, again, that might be coming from on-premise environments to integrate seamlessly with a solution like AWS Cloud HSM. And then lastly, uh, there may be a specific crypto operation that may not be available in KMS. Cloud HSM has often been described as a Swiss army knife of cryptographic capabilities. There's just a much broader set of functions and features that are offered um, for Cloud HSM, particularly when you're getting into some of these custom applications that are built. So a few different reasons uh, to consider using Cloud HSM. So let's talk about some of the history of HSMs and the management there. So deploying HSMs into production uh, takes time, money, and coordination. And so there's the physical deployment and, of course, the maintenance of these devices. Uh, there's you know, the notion of how do I perform backups? How do I handle disaster recovery? All of these considerations when you think about how you would go into production. There's the monitoring and reporting, of course. So looking at audit logs, are my devices healthy? Um, you know, are my crypto operations, you know, are they behaving the way they should be? All of those things are under consideration. Load balancing and failover. So what if one of my devices fails? Uh, how do I make sure that I have, you know, continued operations uh, within my application environment? So those are all very important. But then you get to the meat of what you're really expecting when you're using an HSM. So you want to get to the key in policy management. As mentioned earlier in the Wikipedia description, you know, I want to be able to say, I want to generate a key and I want to use a key in a certain way, whether it's for protecting a piece of information or creating a digital signature show, to show that something truly is authentic. Um, you know, that's why you would uh, want to manage the key and policy management within an HSM. And of course, as mentioned earlier, the integration with an application, whether that's a native AWS service or if it's a custom application where you might want to, as I mentioned a moment ago, either secure a piece of data or uh, prove the authenticity of that data itself. So with AWS Cloud HSM, um, you know, we take away a lot of the infrastructure work. So the physical deployment and maintenance goes away. You don't need to worry about backup and disaster recovery. Uh, we provide automatic monitoring and reporting. And of course we have built-in load balancing with failover. So what that really does for you is it allows you to focus on that key and policy management. And then of course you need to do the application integration, but we really offload a lot of the, I'll say infrastructure work um, that you would otherwise have to do. So that's one of the nice things about adopting a solution like AWS Cloud HSM. So this is just a brief overview here of what you would find on our website if you looked at you know, how it works. Uh, very high level, uh, you would come in on the top part here, the AWS console and command line interface. That's really the administrative task to get the example running, to say, hey, I want to create an HSM or a cluster of HSMs. I might create one or more. We typically recommend at least two uh, for availability purposes. Um, but that would all be done through that console and command line interface. On the bottom is the actual application. So the application that wants to have its information protected, maybe that information is stored in a database somewhere, maybe it's stored in, in S3. Uh, so DynamoDB S3 could be repositories for the data, but you want to make sure it's locked down. And they could be coming in through a range of, of languages to talk to the SDKs that I mentioned earlier. So these could be uh, applications written in Java, C, Python, um, you, know, you name it, but that would be how a an application would be integrated with Cloud HSM through those SDKs, which would then talk to the backend service. And then, of course, here, as you can see on the right, we're, we're storing information both in AWS Amazon CloudWatch as well as AWS CloudTrail. So this is really audit information for the different um, activities that are happening within the service. OK, let's talk now about some of the concepts um, in Cloud HSM. So, the key message here is that you can set up a fully functional and production-worthy solution in a matter of minutes. So we think of Cloud HSM in terms of clusters. And so when you create a cluster, uh, it actually wouldn't necessarily contain an HSM. And the idea is to add instances to that cluster. The cluster is the definition of the HSM. And the HSM instances themselves have copies of the exact same keys. So for example, if I were to generate three keys on one HSM, those keys would be automatically generated, or excuse me, automatically replicated to all other instances within the same cluster. So whether it's a cluster of two or a cluster of 20, those keys are automatically replicate, replicated across the entire cluster. And so as I mentioned earlier, the applications or clients that are talking um, to Cloud HSM are really just load balancing across all the instances within that cluster itself. And as I mentioned a moment ago, this is production worthy because we automatically take backups uh, of your cluster. So um, if, for example, if you generate a key, that 
key would be backed up as part of the overall backup for that cluster. Okay, now let's talk about some of the personas. I mentioned earlier uh, the administrative side and the application side. So on this column here, we're talking about the infrastructure and security administrators. Uh, these are relatively straightforward tasks like creating the cluster I mentioned ago, I mentioned a moment ago, um, creating HSM instances, creating backups, and of course, looking at the health and failover of the overall solution. And so this is typically uh, called or invoked via the AWS API, CLI, or console. Uh, this information is logged in CloudTrail. And one of the key pieces here is we have, we being AWS, there's no visibility over the keys that are being used in a solution. Over on the application side, that's where the application developers would integrate with the SDKs that I mentioned earlier. And they could be through P11 or Java, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and you can integrate with a wide range of algorithms. And you can, of course, scale to meet certain latency and throughput goals. And as mentioned earlier as well, you know, these are secured through end-to-end -end encryption. Audit logs are delivered to CloudWatch. So the customers could look at that information themselves. And most importantly, we enable end customers to achieve compliance. So whether it's um, something like PCI DSS compliance or other regulation around the world, um, we can provide the foundation for, for achieving those particular compliance goals. And this is just a little more detail on what you would see here. Um, typical information that is logged in CloudWatch, so create or delete users, change password, obviously logging in, logging out, um, creating keys, wrapping keys, sharing keys, those are all logged today. Um, we currently do not support the logging of the operations on the bottom there. So encrypt, decrypt, sign, and verify. Uh, we are looking at addressing that in the future. And then so on the right here is just a visual of what that would look like um, in CloudWatch itself. Another important consideration is disaster recovery. Uh, one of the features that we offer is the ability to take a a backup and replicate that into another region. So for example, if you're running in one particular region in the world, um, what you can do is take the backup that's automatically generated and then invoke a call to copy backup to region, which just takes the backup from one region and moves it over to another region. And you can essentially create a new cluster uh, based on that backup. So in, in really a matter of minutes, uh, you're up and running in a new region uh, based on a backup from another region. Just a bit of uh, you know best practices here. This is really most useful when key creation and deletion is limited um, because the, the replication is not necessarily automatic. We don't keep these synchronized. So if you're actively or, or very frequently um, creating keys or deleting keys, uh, this approach probably is not you know, the ideal recommended um, one um, you know, for, for this type of solution. Uh, we really would, would recommend that um, you use this approach uh, when keys are reasonably static, right? So if they're not changing particularly often. Okay, with that, let's drop into some of the COVID compliance verification uh, topics that this uh, webinar is really all about. So just to level set here, um, the idea is to issue vaccine passports. Uh, you know, clearly we can talk about COVID. This could be for anything in the future, passports in general, frankly, but I think the, the COVID one provides, an, provides a very nice concrete example. Uh, just some backdrop, governments and organizations requiring vaccine passports and implementing digital solutions with QR code scanning. So we have seen organizations build these types of solutions today. Um, you know, clearly they exist around us. And so Cloud HSM can be used to securely and easily generate and validate a digitally issued vaccine passport. So with that, I'm going to hand this over to Gotham, at least on the discussion, and then um, you can provide your, your demo um, as well after you go through the, the architecture slide here. Uh, so let's say I, Gotham, uh, want to produce uh, the proof of my vaccination status to a business like uh, the gate agent at the airport for traveling or uh, to the wait staff at a restaurant for me to dine in. Um, uh, we could build an application here, a vaccination website, which can take in my details, take in my uh, vaccine reports, and uh, generate a unique signature based off all of that data using a key, a private key stored in the cloud HSM. Um, return a QR code, which the business could scan and follow through uh, through a verification website uh, and verify the signature 
uh, the data I have provided and written uh, some form of data about me, some identification, uh, my photo, and some details about me, which uh, they can then match with the ID I provide them. Uh, uh, the architecture here uh, is a simple one using an application gateway and uh, Lambda. Uh, the website is running off Lambda uh, uh, using uh, the CloudHSM JCE SDK, talking to a CloudHSM cluster with two HSMs. Uh, and that should give us the resiliency. Uh, uh, and based on the at the season, uh, we could scale up, scale down the vaccination website, uh, add more uh, nodes to it, add more HSMs to the cluster, mm -hmm. and uh, do more uh, signing uh, verifications uh, uh, based on the load. Uh, in the cloud environment, it's very easy to scale these up, up and down. Um, so I have a quick demo to show how all of these things work. Um, so uh, this is the vaccination website. I have submitted my vaccine forms. I have submitted my identification. And I have been uh, provided with this personalized QR code, which has the data about me embedded with a signature uh, and uh, all the uh, uh, relevant data with it. And if you follow through on the QR code, uh, you would, you could get a report which says, hey, this is Gotham, here is how he looks like, uh, there's a name, here is uh, all the data which you can use to identify. And this, I would then produce my driver's license or my passport, which would match all of these data. And the business on the other end would know that uh, I'm fully vaccinated and I should be allowed to use the facilities as needed. All right, thank you for the demo, Gotham. So in addition to um, you know, vaccine uh, and compliance verification, there are other common use cases for AWS Cloud HSM. And just to run through some of them fairly quickly, um, we can enhance AWS KMS uh, through the AWS KMS custom key store, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so it really up levels or upgrades KMS to FIPS 140-2 level three. Um, and this has been supported since 2018. Another common example is TLS offload for Nginx or any form of TLS offload. So organizations that want to reduce computational burden on web servers and provide extra level of security by storing private keys in certified hardware. Um, so this can be used to meet the need with minimal deployment effort. Another one is securing Oracle TDE. So organizations that are looking for a solution that is more secure than Oracle Wallet, but also easier to manage than Oracle Key Vault. So CloudHSM adds key security, simplicity, and centralization to Oracle's existing encryption solution. So it's really complementing that more. And then lastly here is the creation of crypto wallets. So we see many organizations that are looking to build applications that use crypto wallets that are secure, uh, easy to manage, and can scale. And so CloudHSM can be used to create a secure implementation of a cryptocurrency wallet. And lastly, let's talk about the benefits of using AWS Cloud HSM. As mentioned earlier, we provide high availability. So you can deploy instances across any region or even deploy solutions of Cloud HSM clusters across different regions um, you know, throughout the world. Uh, we provide one FIPS 140-2 level three compliance, um, which meets the needs of many of the largest organizations out there, government agencies, financial, et cetera. And then the one-click expansion. Um, you can easily scale up and scale down based on the needs of your environment. Um, so if you're heading into a busy season or if you really want to reduce your cost, you can really scale the cluster in either direction. And then the pay per hour piece, which uh, in many ways goes along with the one-click expansion, really um, you know, organizations can reduce their costs. So if they're running in test environments, they can only run it uh, for the period with, with which they're doing testing. Um, and of course, they want to do a large amount of testing, they can scale that up. But really, uh, the pricing model is per hour, which many of our customers appreciate. So with that, thank you for listening into our webinar. Um, hope you've learned a little bit about uh, AWS Cloud HSM and uh, our vaccine passport uh, solution that we described. Thank you. <laughs>